Second point is, you really have to focus on establishing an emotional connection between the people who work for you and your brand. And th that takes time in China. You really have to generate a great deal of pride in your brand, confidence in your product, more so than you would do in, in other markets. So that is a great focus. Thirdly, you have to really decide how important China is for you as a brand because that dictates the speed in which you try to penetrate the market. Because if you move too fast on distribution, or if you try to commercialize too quickly, when the real business starts, your brand is no longer going to be the prestige icon. So the timing as to rolling out your brand is very critical. I'll give you an example. Uh, China is building about uh, 60, 70 new department stores every year. Now, if you go into the old existing department stores, and the following year there's a new store coming on the other side of the corner, you know, and, and you're going to go into that new store so that you have two distribution points now, in, one in the old and one in the new, and the disparity between the two and its presentation is enormous. So you're much better off waiting for the new one to open and then show your, show your, your brand in the best light than being in the old one and in the new one at the same time. Because most of your competition who doesn't believe in that principle will be in both. And they will have a problem because once you're in a store to come back out, it's almost impossible. So the, uh, so the speed of your rollout of distribution is very key. The other aspect is how do you advertise your product? My view is go deep and narrow instead of going for reach. So my concept would be rather than going in uh, five magazines or ten magazines in one page each month, take three or four magazines and, and go in with six, seven, eight pages. Be the dominant player. Whatever you do, try to be the dominant player right from the beginning. So that, those are some of the, the, the key issues. The, the, the last uh, issue is you really have to look at your, your, offer, your product offering, not just your brand. How does your product offering fit the marketplace. In the United States, uh, when you look at the cosmetic business, 50% of the cosmetic business is f fragrance. Now, if you go to China and advertise fragrance, you will find out very quickly that the total fragrance business in China to the total market is only 4%. So 70% is skincare. And by the way, having light skin is the in thing, not having tan skin. So it's exactly upside down compared to this mar market. So if you, if you, uh, you really have to analyze exactly what is the profile of the consumer and how do you go about communicating that and developing your, your products to the Chinese market. So bottom line, do a lot of preparation up front and do it carefully and then pace yourself because you're not opening up Laos or Burma. <laughs> You're opening up a market, which is a one-time unique opportunity, which will, in most cases, have a tremendous material impact to the success of your overall company around the world. Thanks. Senator Bradley, the, um, uh, you've been on the Starbucks boards for, for a little while, and Howard Schultz is widely quoted saying that China is its uh, number one market in terms of new unit growth over the long term. Um, yet this is a distinctly American concept. Um, so why don't you comment on some of the unique challenges that uh, Starbucks faced as it entered into China and, and, what, and how did it have to adapt in order to be successful? Uh, well, thank you very much, Michael. It's a pleasure to be back with the Committee of 100. It's my fourth visit, my first time in the private sector. So <laughs> I'm talking about Starbucks today as opposed to U.S. policy. Uh, <laughs> some days that's a relief. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Starbucks uh, opened its first store in China in 1999. Today it has 500 stores in greater China, uh, 200 stores in mainland China. Uh, we think China is a market of unlimited potential, thinking in terms of five, 7,000 stores in the not too distant future. And uh, there are 200 million people in China who we think can afford a, um, a frappuccino uh, or a latte. And uh, what Starbucks decided from the beginning was we wanted to be integrated into the culture. We did not want to be 
um, a flash in a pan iconic brand that is a fad for a while and disappears. And so there were certain basic decisions that were made, <clears throat> not initially, but we came to these decisions. One, <clears throat> one is that we wanted an all Chinese team. It started that we had uh, some Americans in the team and we have gone to an all Chinese team run by Jin Long and it is uh, working extremely well. He, of course, worked at Starbucks for many years before he went back and worked for uh, another company in China, but we got him back to, uh, to run Starbucks in China. Um, the other thing about it is that uh, government relations is very important, obviously. Uh, and for Starbucks, the way you understand that is when you go into Shanghai or Beijing or whatever, you don't see any four rent sides. The, uh, the decisions of location are made often by local government. And so with an all Chinese team paying attention to those relationships and bringing something that is very popular to the Chinese consumer, we find that in many, that we're being integrated into many mayor's city plans. And the mayors compete to get Starbucks, which is a nice position to be in. Um, the, the concept of Starbucks is roughly the same in China as it is here. And that was a decision Howard Schultz made a long time ago when we were going to Europe or we were going to other places. And the argument was, well, you had to dramatically change your concept. And we said, no, we're going to keep the same concept. So the concept is the same. And basically, the core idea for Starbucks is that it is the place between work and home. And in China, we find that it is the experience, the authentic experience of the place that is as important as the coffee. And if you go into <clears throat> stores in Shanghai or other cities, you find that there are people having dates at Starbucks. There are young business people negotiating contracts at Starbucks and taking what uh, Victor said about uh, the power of uh, young people. There's a whole generation of people who've integrated into the Starbucks culture and see it as a part of their social and their professional lives as a place uh, to go. Um, the other thing is Starbucks does not advertise in China. And it's a little bewildering to us how it happens. But people who cannot speak English come into the store and order frappuccinos. <laughs> Uh, we take that to be a very positive sign. <laughs> um, the other thing is that we treat the workforce the same way we treat the workforce here, and we've had tremendous reaction to that. For example, uh, everybody gets stock options. And when people understood that we were actually giving them a stake in ownership in the firm, it was a, a revelation that bonded workers workers to the company in a fundamental way. And then we also uh, make a decision to be active in the community. Uh, Starbucks is, uh, prides itself on being a company with a conscience, not only in the way it, it reacts to its employees and treats its employees, uh, the way it views the environment as a whole, but the way it views uh, its uh, community. And in China, early on, uh, we made the decision that we were going to give something back from the beginning. And so Starbucks started a significant fund to provide teacher education for deployment of teachers into rural China, where there are fewer teachers and where many young women really don't go to school after about the age of 12 or 13. And so we were trying to be consistent as a brand and many of the values that Starbucks embodies in this country, assuming that those values would travel well in China, and it has proved uh, to be the case. There are obviously some changes in food in the stores. Uh, we're not trying to displace the tea culture. We're simply trying to add an appreciation for coffee.